So we've seen that cells require energy for all of their physiological processes. And this means that if a cell is deprived of oxygen, eventually the physiological processes will stop. But after that, if the hypoxia is prolonged, the cell will actually start to die. And this has never been put better than the great British physiologist who in 1912 wrote, oxygen lack not only stops the machine, but wrecks the machinery. So the oxygen lack will stop the cell from working, it will stop the machine, and eventually the same hypoxia that has stopped the cell from working will go on and kill the cell. And Haldane actually wrote this about the brain, he was talking about the brain. And it's true that the brain is affected first by hypoxia, but it's true of any tissue. And when a tissue becomes hypoxic, it will stop working because it's not producing any energy. And after a period of time, it will die. Now, normally, when a cell is using energy, when a cell is using oxygen in the production of energy, that is called aerobic, with the presence of oxygen. So energy production in the presence of oxygen is aerobic energy production, aerobic metabolism. But if a cell is deprived of oxygen, it can still go on producing energy, at least for a short period of time, in the absence of oxygen. It can only do this for a little while, but it can do it for a period of time. And the production of energy in the absence of oxygen is called anaerobic respiration, and without. Energy is produced without oxygen, which it can do for a period of time. But the trouble with this is that lactic acid is produced. And when lactic acid is produced, the pH of the cell decreases. In other words, the cell becomes more acidic because of the accumulation of lactic acid. And this has many effects. For example, the chromatin, the nuclear material in the cell, will start actually clumping together. So there can be damage to the very DNA of the cell. And it also particularly affects the membranes, the cell membrane around about the outside. <clears throat> and it also affects the membranes around cell organelles. It affects the membranes around about mitochondria. It affects the membranes around about lysosomes. So what happens is, if the energy is no longer being produced, the cell membrane on the outside is affected. That means that energy can no longer be used to pump sodium out of the cell. So sodium accumulates in the cell. Potassium will passively diffuse out of the cell. So you'll get too much potassium outside the cell and too much sodium inside the cell. And the sodium, of course, is osmotic. It attracts water and the cell will start blowing up. <clears throat> so the endoplasmic reticulum, the lysosomes, the mitochondria will start swelling up with water. Now, if the oxygen supply is restored, these swelling effects are reversible and the cell can make a full recovery. But if this process goes on for too long a period of time, then it becomes irreversible. The mitochondria can swell so much that they cannot resume the process of making energy and the process is irreversible. And then eventually, as the lysosomes swell, remember the lysosomes contain digestive enzymes, lysozyme, for example, and other enzymes. When the lysosomes burst, these nasty digestive enzymes will be released into the cell, and the cell will basically auto-digest. So very important. Initially, the cells will swell up when they're hypoxic, and at that stage, it's reversible. If you can get some oxygen into your patient at that stage, you will save the viability of their tissues. The damage will not occur if you can restore the oxygen supply. If not, and the hypoxia is prolonged, the damage to the cells will become irreversible and there will be cell death and that cell, that group of cells, that tissue will die. So remember, oxygen lack not only stops the machine from working, eventually it wrecks the machinery. It will cause tissue necrosis. Let's just look at this briefly on the notes.
Let's think about how long it takes for oxygen lack to damage different tissues of the body. Now, the brain is the most sensitive organ to hypoxia. If the brain is deprived of its blood supply, it will stop working and the patient will become unconscious within 10 to 20 seconds. And I've seen this in cardiac arrest situations. You can actually, I've actually been in a cubicle with a patient, seen ventricular fibrillation on the monitor, and the patient actually remains conscious for what seems an awful long time, but in actual fact wasn't more than about 20 seconds because the brain will stop working, very sensitive to oxygen lag. And within one to four minutes, brain damage will start to occur. And we normally say that if a cardiac arrest goes on for three minutes, then there is the risk of, of brain damage. But don't let that deter you from trying to resuscitate patients. Do still try to resuscitate and don't assume that there is brain damage. This is the, this is the principle behind basic life support. When we do chest compressions, we're generating a, a circulation. When we blow oxygen or even our expired air into someone else's lungs, Oxygen is getting into the lungs, that's going into the blood and circulating to the brain. So good basic life support will keep the brain oxygenated while we are waiting for advanced life support to arrive. The myocardium itself is very oxygen dependent. Experimental studies have shown that three to five minutes after losing their oxygen supply, myocardial cells will start will stop contracting. Three to five minutes after losing their oxygen supply, they will stop contracting. And after that, there will be progressive damage, eventually resulting in cell death. This is why, if we're going to thrombolize patients, that is, if we are going to remove the thrombus from a coronary artery to reperfuse the myocardium after a coronary thrombosis, we should do so as quickly as we can after the initial event. Experimental studies have shown that kidney cells will start to die after about 20 to 30 minutes. So 10, 20 minutes, kidney cells will stop working. After 20 to 30 minutes, kidney cells will, stop, will start dying if they're deprived of their oxygen supply experimentally. Liver cells, as we mentioned, very metabolically active, need a lot of oxygen, and they can start being damaged after about 10 minutes. Skeletal muscle cells, though, can survive in the absence of oxygen for quite long periods of time, two hours. So when we use tourniquets in surgical situations, as we often do, to leave a tourniquet on for half an hour or even an hour is not going to damage the skeletal muscle cells in that limb. An hour and a half is probably the, the longest you'd ever want to leave a tourniquet on for. But it shows that skeletal muscle cells are much more resistant to hypoxia than other tissues. So hypoxia will eventually damage and kill any tissue, but the amount of time it takes for the tissue to stop working and for that tissue damage to occur does vary between tissues quite significantly.